Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to share how you can create your own AWS account for personal use following a number of security best practices with minimal cost. I say for personal use because if you're running a business you should look at the control tower service. The control tower service is going to automate a lot of these things for you but does have a slightly higher cost than the tutorial that I'm going to show you right now. So let's get stuck into it. We're actually going to create two accounts. The first is the management account. This is going to be where all our management tools live and we're going to avoid using this. We're going to secure it using multi-factor authentication on the root user. We're then going to use AWS organizations to create a second account, our application account where our applications are going to run. We're then going to use single sign-on to get into that application account, again with multi-factor authentication, enable guard duty, intelligent threat detection, and CloudTrail. Let's get stuck into our new account setup now. First, we're going to navigate to the AWS homepage. I'm going to hit create an AWS account. I'm going to enter a real email address, a very complex randomly generated password, and an account name. Just need to do a quick security check. And this is a personal account. We're going to enter our real name and address. But we should also have a look at the AWS customer agreement as well and become familiar with what you can and can't do inside of AWS. We'll hit create on that. Then we need to enter a real credit card and a phone number that we're going to receive a text message from for verification purposes. Enter the verification code and we've been successfully verified. Now we can choose a support plan here. I'm just going with the basic plan because this is for personal use. If you're a business, you'd go for the business plan. The business plan actually gives you 24 by seven uh, tech support, including chat and phone. So we've created our account. Now let's go into the management console. The first time we log into the management console, we'll be doing so using the root user of the account. So we're going to navigate to the console page and insert our email address as the root user. And of course, our password, which should be randomly generated and not used for anything else. and we're now logged into the console as the root user. This user can do anything in your account, including closing the account and all the resources in it. So you're gonna be very careful when you use it. You can go up the top there to security credentials. And the first thing we're gonna do is enable multi-factor authentication. And I'm gonna choose a U2F security key, which is a Yubi key I'm using today. You can actually use the YubiKey for multiple different AWS services and different things out there on the internet as well. So it's accepted that key. Now, every time I need to log into my root user, I must have that multi-factor authentication key. I could also use the Google Authenticate token there as well. I'm gonna navigate to account settings. Now we're gonna put some basic account settings in place. Just gonna skip past the endpoints section. Um, on the left there, you can actually generate a credential report as well. Uh, if you need to have a look at what credentials you have in your account. I'm uh, just gonna go back to the account settings there. And this is where you actually can get your account ID at the top. I'm going to enter some alternate contacts. These could be all of myself uh, as a personal account um, and different email address in case my primary email address can't be reached. And also security challenge questions that can be used if you need to reset or get into your account through AWS support. We're also going to enable the option for IAM users and roles to get access to the billing information. So we don't need to use our root account to go and see what our bill is. And if you scroll down, that's the very dangerous section on how to close your account. 
As I mentioned, only the root user can close your account. Let's go into using AWS Organizations now for a new account setup. So to access it in the console logged in as the root user, you go to the organizations uh, or you can type in organizations in the search box. Hit create organization, hit create again, and there we are, simple as that. Now you will need to verify the email address. So go and check your email once you've done this. I've verified my email address there. And now we're gonna add a new account by creating an account. Now this is gonna be the account which we're gonna be running applications in. So we just need to enter some details. It needs to be a separate email address. Of course, you can use an alias for this email address. Let's move on to single sign-on now or SSO. So we simply type in SSO in the search field. We access the SSO console. Now the SSO is a regional service. So you can see at the top right there, I'm enabling this in the Sydney region, which is my local region. You should pick the region that's local to you. So now we've enabled SSO. So this allows us to log in seamlessly into multiple different AWS accounts, including our account that we just created. I'm going to enable MFA and require the user to use MFA. Just have a look at the options there, save the changes. Now we're gonna enable integrated applications and we're gonna create a group. So we should always put users into a group. So we're just gonna call this one admin and then we're gonna add a user, which is myself. I'm gonna to navigate to accounts and we're gonna create a permission set. Permission set is a policy which is attached to the AWS accounts we're gonna link this with. There's a number of different job functions. The administrator access one at the top there will give you full access to everything, but I really only need the power user access. You should always use least privilege in this case. Just click through on the create. Now we have a permission set created. Now I have a management account and a production account. That's the label I used for this application account. And we're going to tick that and assign the users. Or actually we're going to assign a group, that admin group we just created. And we're going to assign our permission set. And now that's just going to take a few moments to create the new account. So moving on to organization service control policies now. So SCPs govern what an account can do at the account level. So there's no way for that account to go beyond that. You can see our account has a default full AWS access policy, but what we're gonna do is put some baseline policy in here. You can access this on my blog as well. And we're also gonna block some regional services as well outside of the regions which I don't wanna use. So I'm allowing US East one because I want to use uh, CloudFront and AWS WAC, which is based out of that region, and Sydney. So we're just going to hit Create Policy. And now we have our policies in place. Now we're going to allocate those policies to the accounts, and we're going to do this at the root level. Now the policies, and just by attaching there, the policies won't actually apply to the management account only that production. So moving on to guard duty now. So we access the guard duty console and it's a regional service. So I'm starting with the Sydney region here, but I'll also need to go and do US East one because that's another region I'm using. So you simply enable it there. Go into the settings and Inside the organization, we're going to have a delegated administrator account. So we're just going to grab our account ID and we can do that from the quick menu up there. 
and insert that account ID there. Only one account in an organization or a guard duty configuration can be the delegated administrator. Now we're gonna enable guard duty in the organization. And it's just enabling and we can refresh there. Then we're gonna auto enable S3 protection. And because I didn't do it first, we're gonna enable it on that single account that we've already created. And this is where you go to see any findings. Now I've done the Sydney region, I'm gonna to go to North Virginia now, or US East one. If I simply enable guard duty there again. And again, I need to do the delegated administrator for that new region. and repeat the same process with enabling it for organizations in the region and auto enabling S3 protection. Love guard duty, it detects so much, so many things in your AWS account. You just get really, really good insights out of it. So it's a really good idea to enable it. So now we're going to create email alerts for guard duty because we don't want to keep going back into the console and checking. So again, in our management account, first we're going to create an SNS topic and then point that to an email address. So I'm just simply calling it guard duty. You can call it anything you want. Simply create the empty topic. Then we're gonna create a subscription, which is the email address. And I simply put my email address in there. We could of course go to a Slack channel or anything like else like that. Uh, email address is very generic and easy as a demonstration. Now we're gonna to go to the CloudWatch console and navigate to the events or event bridge as it's now known as. And I'm gonna have the event uh, pattern information on my blog as well uh, that you can access. It's also in the GuardDuty documentation in the documentation website. Gonna make the target the SNS topic we just created. And we're gonna configure the input transformer on the import. So this is just interpreting the message as it comes through from guard duty, uh, putting it in a pretty format for the email. Again, we just need a name on this one. And now we've got that rule created. Now, of course, we've done this in the Sydney region now we're gonna go and do this in the North Virginia region. And of course, you don't have to use the two regions. Uh, it's just my preference. I wanted to demonstrate how you do it in both. Again, we're just gonna create a topic in the simple notification service. That has to be a separate topic and separate subscription because SNS, like GuardDuty and many other services, are regional. Now we're gonna to go to the CloudWatch console again and create that event. Put in the event pattern and the target's gonna be the SNS topic for that region. So input transformer. And of course the name again, now we're created. 
So now we're going to get any alerts from Guard Duty to that email address from those two regions. Let's have a look at creating CloudTrail now in an AWS organization setup. So we access the CloudTrail console. This is from our management account. I'm going to create a trail. And I'm already on the Sydney region as my preferred region. Then we're going to hit that little create trail button to get the full trail configuration experience. I'm going to give it a name, anything we want. And this is the magic tick box to enable for all accounts in my AWS organization. So I'm going to enable log file validation and I'm going to use a KMS key for this. This is the most expensive part of enabling CloudTrail is a separate key will cost $1 per month uh, per region. We're also going to enable data and inside events. So we're getting a, a good picture of what's going on in our account, uh, including from S3 buckets. So those logs from the S3 are going to come through to CloudTrail. We just hit next on that, verify our details and hit create trail. It's as simple as that. Now we've got the recording set up in the management account. Now let's sign on using the SSO service and our user that we created. First, we need to enter a password. So this is a password reset based on the email that we'll send. And that will also have the login link, which you can also get through the console in the SSO console. Right, so now we're doing the actual sign in that new password that we've reset and we get prompted for an MFA device configuration. So in this case, I'm just gonna use the Authenticator app, get my QR code, should never share that QR code or the secret that goes along with it. Sign the device, and now we've been registered. Redirect to the SSO console and we can see here we have our one production account that we granted access to. So we can access the management console, or we can also get temporary command line or programmatic access credentials. This is what you can get an access and secret key instead of using an IAM user that is short lived. So it's much safer to use the access keys generated here. And you can see I've just launched into the management console and it's just like the ordinary management console except my session's going to time out after eight hours by default. 